All right, second half of this uh, 2015 Valley of the Sun Bowl getting set to kick off. A 27 to 21 lead for visiting Central Lakes. Uh, pretty even first half. Uh, both teams turned the ball over twice, uh, inclu and not including a block punt. Uh, so, in, a, in essence, uh, Scottsdale with three. And so they will be receiving to start the second half, trailing 27 to 21. Central Lakes had 290 yards total in that first half. Scottsdale had 250. And Monahan, one of the leading rushers in the game, is up across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Good starting field position after the tackle by Andrew Wallach on special teams. You know, and that ball came out a little bit mm -hmm. towards the end as well on that one. They, these Scottsdale mm -hmm. offensive players and return men have to really secure the ball because Central Lakes is doing a great job trying to strip them as they're going down. Monahan, who had 75 yards on six carries in the first half. Armand Weiwei unofficially six carries, 92 yards, and their quarterback, Brugman, threw for three touchdowns and had one interception, 142 yards through the air. And he comes out throwing on first down and 10. He'll dump it off to the far side, and the ball was caught. Was he inbounds? He was juggling it, and they're going to rule it incomplete near the 47-yard line. Well, that's a form of a little naked bootleg pass where they slip the slot receiver, in this case, Blakes, Tyer Blakes, who's in the tight slot position, and he slips underneath the defense. And uh, wouldn't have been much of a gain on the play, but uh, incomplete for second and 10. And Scottsdale is missing six key components to their team here today for various reasons including a hip injury to one of their running backs, their third on the depth chart, Juice Davis. But Monahan and Weiwei have done a nice job, well over 100 yards combined as this pass is incomplete to the near side. That was awful tight coverage there by Kier Rhodes. Rhodes has been the, the corner all game long on Curitan, and he's had his share of good plays and bad plays. Uh, really good coverage that time. Close to pass interference, but uh, he must have timed it just right. So now it's third down and 10. Brugman with way, way to his left, and he'll loft it up, the throw to the near side to Curitan, and it looked like there may have been some contact there. Curitan couldn't get his right arm up, and it looked like he was clearly held by Rhodes. The hat comes off by the official to the near side. Well, we're gonna have a few Offside. conversations. Defense, number 56, five-yard penalty. Replay, third down. Well, that, was, that was a great job by Brugman of uh, going forward with the play and taking a shot down the field. The hat comes off when the receiver steps out of bounds. So that would have not been a completion. It would have negated a completion if that would have happened. And now Weiwei, arm on Weiwei to the 49 of Central Lakes. He's gonna be a few yards shy of the first down. That is actually his, and we gave you an incorrect stat earlier. Weiwei now 13 carries for 95 yards. And the punting unit is out here for Scottsdale. Well, that's a wasted opportunity for the artichokes. They start at their own 44-yard line with great field position and aren't able to knock out a first down and give themselves a chance to be in scoring territory. you got to watch for fake punt in this situation, however. Arlington and Rowell is back deep. This is Hiram Velez, and he shanked it. He shanked it, and it's going to go out of bounds near the 43-yard line of Central Lakes. Well, Jeff, I'm going to tell you what Velez was thinking right there. He's seeing the rush, and he's thinking about taking off with the ball. He was definitely looking at the rush, not watching his ba the ball leave his hand, and he, that's the worst punt I've ever seen that young man make. So with 13.41 left to go, 27 to 21 as the Central Lakes team is lining up here for the snap. First down and 10 from their own 43 yard line. And they really picked up their offense in that second quarter. 
Nice job. They try to run jam around the right edge, and that one was broken up on an outstanding defensive play by Tamara Holmes. So will bring up second down and seven. We've had four lead changes in this contest. We had a very exciting first half. Jake Faber, Faber the quarterback, led this offense. They averaged 57 points a game back in that Minnesota College Athletic Association. And here he goes, taking off with it inside the Scottsdale 40 and out of bounds inside the 35. Well, not a designed run. It was a play action pass to the short side of the field and nearly the entire Scottsdale defense went with the receivers to the short side. There was nobody left here to the wide side and Faber saw the opening and took off and got a huge gain, bringing up a first and 10 at the plus 32. Well, he had five rushing touchdowns. He's not afraid to run with the ball. Conversely, Brugman uh, rarely will throw the ball. And so first down and 10 from the 32 yard line and he will hand off. This is their second back, Trey Blanchard, who had nearly 800 yards coming into this game. Of course, he's over that mark with the carries that he has had and averages about 6.4 per carry, second down and eight. And now they've changed their personnel. They were in their 11 personnel. They've gone back to 10 with the four wide receivers, no tight end and Blanchard, the remaining back offset right of Faber. 74 degrees, our game time temperature here at Decabuter Sports Complex as Faber goes for the home run ball in the corner of the end zone. It was well covered by Scottsdale, led by DJ Olmstead and Telvitz Way. Yeah, great job there by the Scottsdale secondary. They didn't go for the pump fake. They faked the bubble screen to the slot receiver Arlington. Nobody from the deep secondary went for the fake and both the corner and the safety were in perfect position to cover the Speedy Johnson. Now Tristan Waters is in, top of the screen, number 81 as a receiver. And he hasn't had a touch, and I don't see Johnson out there, their leading receiver, as Faber throws, and they hit the guy. Waters, who just came into the game at the 15, and he breaks to the outside and forced out of bounds near the nine. Well, Waters came in to replace Johnson. Johnson ran the deep route. He turned to the sideline and he waved to the sideline that he needed a break. Waters came in, gave him a break, and gave him a big first down at the eight yard line. That was a 22 yard pass play from Faber. Faber in the first half, 10 of 14 for 195 yards. And there's a good chance he's gonna surpass 3,000 yards passing here today. And that'd be a great milestone for any quarterback. Handoff, and this time Scottsdale's defense coming up big. And at the bottom of the heat was Maurice Burton, one of the leading tacklers, 14 sacks, 24 tackle for losses. That was a great call there by Doug Madoski, the head coach and defensive coordinator. Uh, a run blitz against the power off tackle play. He had two guys there penetrating into the backfield just as they got the handoff to force that five yard loss. So now it's second down and goal from the 13 yard line. Central Lakes out of Brainerd, Minnesota leading at 27 to 21 with 10.50 on the clock, third quarter action. Faber to the air. Now running out of the pocket, gets it inside the 10 and takes on a defender near the seven yard line. And lowering the boom was one of the active defensive the defensive players here today in Tamarack Holmes for Scottsdale. Well, Jeff, I saw something that I haven't seen in three games this year, and I've seen Scottsdale all three times this year and a few times last year. Brian Keyes missed a tackle mm. on the quarterback. I'm telling you what, he's got to be talking to himself because that young man never misses tackles. No, number five. He's been a beast out there. Third and goal from the eight. 10 minutes on the clock, third quarter action. And we got to stop and play and Central Lakes. Timeout. We'll take the timeout. Central out. Lakes, their first timeout. All right, today's game is brought to you by Maricopa Community Colleges where your education and success comes first. By Scottsdale Community College. Learn, grow, achieve. 
by Cox Communications, your friend in the digital age, and by MCTV, Maricopa College's television. We're plugged in to what's happening at your Maricopa Colleges. Alongside the Hall of Fame coach, Joe Kirsting, out of the many years of Glendale Community College, Ashley Neville, I'm Jeff Lowry, MCTV Sports, our entire crew here today. You know, you look at the history of the Valley of the Sun, we mentioned it earlier. It started in 1981, Ricks College, defeating Arizona Western 28 to 21. The team that has been at the most times, Glendale Community College, a total of 19 times. Well, Jeff, first real big play of the second half coming up right here. You got third down and goal for Central Lakes. They're a very explosive offensive team. They have a poor kicker, so you know they don't want to line up for a field goal and if they go fourth down, but this is going to be a huge, huge play in this early part of the second half. Faber into double team coverage, and he is picked off into the end zone and racing out with it. What a read that time by Telvin's way. And for Telvin's, his fourth interception of the year. He had a pick six earlier in the season, and none could not be bigger than that one. Well, Jeff, you called it perfectly, and this was what we were wondering about before the game. Were they gonna single cover or double cover at times? The great receiver, Kyron Johnson, they doubled him that time. He threw into double coverage. Faber made a mistake that time, and Way was in perfect position to pick that ball off and set up the artichokes. 27-21, the artichokes will take over at their own 15-yard line, keep it on the ground, running left side. Here's Way Way going to work, up across the 40, inside Central Lakes territory, along the far sideline. He got tripped up near the 13. He is into the end zone, and the signal is touchdown. Jeff, I didn't think he had that kind of speed. I, we've seen him play a lot, and he's never had a run of that length ever before. And uh, Weiwei breaks it for 86 yards. An unbelievable run along the far side, and this game is tied at 27 apiece. And you could see on the replay, he got some great downfield blocking from his wide receivers. And that's three of the four secondary men for Central Lakes, and they cannot catch the great running back, Armand Weiwei. Jacob Heath to hold. Eric Lopez has just given Scottsdale a 28-27 lead with 9.33 left to go in the third. And that is our fifth lead change of the night. You're watching the 35th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl on MCTV Sports. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat? One in five children struggles with hunger in America. Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Well, it's been an outstanding game so far through better than two quarters of play. Scottsdale gaining the lead again. We've had five lead changes. It's 28-27. Scottsdale hosting this Valley of the Sun Bowl game for the third consecutive year. This is their fifth trip to the Valley of the Sun. Arlington from his own five-yard line. Actually, Rhodes is back in there, and he's up to the 25. Well, I thought once he muffed that cat that he would not be able to get that much yardage, but uh, great job by the by the front guys getting him a wall to that right sideline and getting out to the 25 yard line. All right, so Central Lakes will now try to counter that score. Do you realize that the three turnovers are three, uh, yeah, the three turnovers for Central Lakes have all resulted in a Scottsdale, eventually a Scottsdale touchdown. One from 
red zone score, one from the 50-yard line, and then score, and that one from 86 yards away in one play. Incredible. Oh, and we got a Raider down on the field there, and you just hate to see that. That might be one of the running backs. No, I think. No, that I see. I see Blanchard's right there. Yeah, that's one of the guys up front. Well, let's take a timeout with 9-10 left to go here in the third. You're watching the 35th Annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. If you want to see the other side of the earth, then travel with 180 View here on MCTV. Tune in and take a journey from Arizona to the Ukraine. Compare lifestyles, architecture, the land, and traditions when we look at each culture and learn about our differences. 180 View is seen on MCTV, Cox Cable Channel 115. For airtimes, go to maricopa.edu slash MCTV. All right, back here at Scottsdale Community College. Unfortunately for Central Lakes, Emmanuel Henry injured on that last play. He had taken over at left tackle from starter Kyle Zerden on that first down run and brings up second down and eight here for Central Lakes as they now trail 28-27 to Scottsdale in this 2015 Valley of the Sun Bowl. And here's Jake Faber and throwing and it's complete over the middle and all the way up to midfield goes Cody Rowell who had 25 catches for nearly 300 yards coming in and he is all the way up to midfield. And there was not a lot of room to put that ball into and a beautiful throw there by Faber and Rao picks up a nice first down at midfield. 23 yards on the play, first down and 10 for Central Lakes. Scottsdale in the all white. And this play is gonna get blown up in the backfield. First in there was Dennis Cooper, a five foot 10, 210 pound linebacker in his freshman year out of Kansas City, Missouri. Well, nice job by the defensive front of uh, Scottsdale. They've been kind of hit and miss with their blitz game, and that one hit well for them and was able to force a two-yard loss, so they'll bring up a second and 12. They're going to their three wide receiver set again. They got the tight end back in the formation, so they love to mix it between run and pass when the tight end is in the game. Seven minutes and 40 seconds on the clock. And here's Faber over the middle and a spectacular diving catch. The ball came out and got picked up by the tight end, Garrett. And Garrett's is down to the 23. And the linesman on this sideline is pointing that the ball is down. We're gonna have a discussion. We got four zebras, five zebras in the discussion now and we'll see what they decide. The ball was initially caught, a spectacular catch by Bo Wilhelm. Amazing catch. Let's watch it on the replay. You'll see Wilhelm lays out. He's on the ground. That plays over. Yep. Yeah, that, that uh, there shouldn't even be any question about that. This is not the NFL. If it was the NFL and he was not touched, he could do that. But uh, in college football, once, once you're down on the ground, that the play is over. Well, the head coach of Central Lakes, Greg Maddox, standing at the 40-yard line. And I'm sure he'll be trying to convince the officials to call it his way. Now the question is, did he have enough for the first down? Yeah, that is gonna be the issue for sure. So the officials it's are- a, It's a just too bad they don't have access to replay like we have here. It's a simple call once yeah. you see it on the replay. But uh, in junior college football, we don't have replay. Yeah, they continue to confer about that last play. We've had five lead changes. We've had five turnovers in this game between the two teams. And the three turnovers committed by visiting Central Lakes in the red uniforms have all resulted in a Scottsdale score. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Well, Jeff, you can surely see why both of these teams are playing in the postseason. There's a lot of talent in, on both of these squads. Mm -hmm. Excellent coaching going on, some major adjustments done by both teams. And uh, this game, if I've ever seen a game that's gonna go down to the wire, this is gonna be one of those kind of games. Now, this is a pretty critical call, but either way, it's gonna remain Central Lakes football, but where and what down it is 
is going to be the question. Field. Up and down at the yard line. So it looks like they're going to rule that he was down at the 40, which was actually the line to gain. So a fresh set of downs after a 12 yard pass play, and it's going to be a first and 10 for Central Lakes, trailing 28 27 with seven and a half left to go here in the third. And end up making the correct call there. And now, big chance for Central Lakes to finish this drive and retake the lead. Scottsdale last time out got the big interception in the end zone. That pass is incomplete on first and 10 as they put some pressure. One of the rare times we've seen pressure on Jake Faber, the quarterback for Central Lakes. But, uh, you know, you talk about, uh, you know, the big plays in these games. And, you know, after doing this is my 10th Valley of the Sun Bowl, and it just seems like momentum is something that is so fleeting. It, it comes and it goes in these games so many times. We've had a lot of close games the last couple of years. Second down and 10, rolling out, Faber to throw on the run and going up for it and making a spectacular catch and then paying the price on the far side. They're gonna say incomplete, but not a bad effort by Cody Rowell. Yeah, great effort by Rao, but the ball led him out of bounds and he did, was not able to secure one. You only need one foot in college football. You could not get one foot in bounds. So that's gonna bring up a third and 10 at the 40 yard line. They remain in their three, I think I believe they're in their four wide receiver package here. And the remaining back is Blanchard, number four, who they love to throw the screen to. So you gotta be alert for that on this third and 10 situation. Rufino was credited with the play on defense on that last play and now another throw over to the far side and it is Wilhelm again. He's gonna be dragged down. There is a flag back in the area of holding as Holmes makes the tackle on the far side. Well, Scottsdale went to their three-man line again and they're not getting any pressure with this three-man front. But part of the reason on that play was we're gonna have holding. a hold. Offense, number 70, 10 yard penalty, replay third down. Well, that's uh, Kyle Zierden, the left tackle who had started the game at left tackle, then was replaced by Emmanuel Henry, and then had to come back when Henry got hurt. Well, that's a huge break for the Artichokes. That's gonna bring up a third down and 20 for Central Lakes, right at the midfield stripe. So it's a great chance for Scottsdale to get a stop and get the ball back for their offense. Six minutes and 56 seconds left to play here. Quarter number three of the 35th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. Central Lakes in possession. Faber, the quarterback, 6'4", 210. He's in trouble. He's being wrapped up and down he goes to the turf here at Deca Booter Sports Complex. And in there was Noamo, Junior Noamo. Yeah, Junior did a great job with the three-man rush that time. They were finally able to get pressure on the quarterback. There was really good coverage down the field. Of course, Central Lakes had to try to push the ball down the field when it's third down and 20. So great job by Scottsdale playing coverage there and getting pressure on the quarterback. So now Central Lakes punting, and he shanks it. That is Chad Mapes. And the ball is going to roll all the way down to about the 41 yard line. So 13 yards. <laughs> you talk so often uh, on the air, off the air, as it's 28 27 Scottsdale, they'll be taking over here on downs. You talk so much about the importance of special teams. Yeah, and this is a great field position for Scottsdale. Up one point, they'd obviously love to push that lead a little bit higher, at least with getting a field goal or possible touchdown on this drive. So Scottsdale takes over first down and 10, flag down on the play. They come out running the ball with Monahan straight ahead. He got about three, maybe four yards on the play and a late whistle coming in, but there is a penalty. Well, obviously his forward progress was stopped and Central Lakes continues to play and try to rip out that football which is a smart play as long as you, you know, he's not down on the ground and, and the whistle hasn't blown. Offside, defense, number 12, five yard penalty, 
Still second down. You know, that's a name we haven't called today at all, Jeff, nope. is, is uh, Sean Walker, the great defensive end from Central Action. Lakes. He's, he's loaded up the stat columns uh, with his play this year, but he has not been in on any action really in this game. Well, he's six foot six, 222, and going up against a front line that averages about 300 pounds for Scottsdale. Brugman throwing incomplete. And, and just as I say that, he draws a, what looked like was double team blocking, and I thought they were going to call a holding call on Tyer Blake, so it was very, very close. The referee here started to reach for his flag, <laughs> and he changed his mind. In anticipation. <laughs> All right, now Curitan is the receiver down to the bottom of your screen. Nawabi, who had a touchdown reception back in quarter number two. Now Nawabi has moved to the far side, and Curitan is now the slot receiver left. And they're going to run that fly sweep, and Monahan left side coughed it up, and this is a turnover. That's just what I've been talking about with the Central Lakes team. It's been it's very obvious to me watching the way they play defensively that that is being coached to really work at second, third man in on the tackle, stripping the arms, trying to pull that football out of there. And they did a great job that time of forcing the turnover and giving their offense great field position. You know, we thought this was going to be a high-scoring game, and it started off that way, but the way these defenses are now ripping at the ball and getting turnovers, it's kind of leveled this game out. So they start from their own 49-yard line. Just under six minutes left to go. Jam gets jammed up front. <laughs> you called it exactly right. That's what came to my mind just as the defense <laughs> smacked him backward. My, oh, my, there's some physical play on that play. Look like big Marquise Clayton, 286 pounds, stands only at six foot. He was making the play. You know I've been waiting three quarters to say that. Perfect timing. Carlton. D-J-A-M, I've never seen that word before. Second down after a gain of four. The pass is complete to Johnson. The knee was down. And he's gonna be tackled on the play. I mean, he's gonna get the first way. down. He just he just barely got it. But a nice job there by uh, Johnson going down and getting that low throw and picking up the key first down. You know, one of the things that we always emphasized with our offense was get a first down. Every time we get the football, get a first down. Because just emotionally it makes a difference and, I, and field position makes a difference and it keeps your defense on the sideline for a while so they can recover to go out and play hard the next time out. But Central Lakes this year has been very effective on third down conversions. They've converted two thirds of them, but they're not going anywhere on this play. And Scottsdale's defense. Looking awfully good there. I don't know if the coaching staff over there on the far side wanted a penalty. Well, the whole sideline over there is yelling that uh, I believe they thought the face mask got grabbed and nobody threw a flag. So uh, looks like the artichokes might have gotten a break on that play, but they did a great job penetrating that play. Nobody got blocked well at the point of attack. Watch this right here. You see number seven, number four. And they're ripping out of there. And Kanyon Guerrara and Curtis Taylor. Absolutely. Second down from the 45. So they lose five on that play. And now Faber flushed out of the pocket. Now trying to go backwards. And he's going down after a two-yard pickup. And you wonder if this is going to be a late hit against the defense. Brent Davidson with the tackle, the 270-pounder out of Tucson. Well, Jeff, I was noticing during the first half there was some chippiness and extracurricular type of activity going on, and you could kind of see that things were getting a little edgy. And now that the game is a one-point game, we're getting closer to the end, the players are getting a little more exhausted, sometimes those flags come out more often when this is going on. And right now, Greg Medic, the head coach of Central Lakes, literally walked over to the stands on the far side. And by the way, Central Lakes traveled pretty well. There's a, a good crowd over there. And he's Top telling. Play. Unsportsmanlike conduct. 
defense, number 62. Punch to the head. Wow. He has been disqualified from the game. Oh, boy. Wow. But Coach Medic went over there and told those fans he needs, you guys need to calm down. That's, that's a great job by the coach. Great job by the coach. And uh, Brant Davidson, who's been a stalwart for the defensive front all this season, just a very, very poor decision on that play, and he's been eliminated from this game. That's too bad, and he's eliminated. At the 333 mark, Faber is going to take off with it as he calls his own number and slides to the 16-yard line. You know, I would have called Faber an effective runner. Yeah. Reminds me of Glendale's quarterback last year. And I, and his name slips me right now. But uh, they don't design runs for him, but he sees openings, and when he sees those openings, he's, he really is able to get good yardage and then get down to the ground not take big hits. That was a gain of nine, and now they run it to the right side, slips the tackle, and that is Blanchard who will get the first down. He's all the way down to the 11, a seven-yard pickup and a first down. Well, something just happened on that play that could be uh, troublesome for Central Lakes. Scott came off during the play. He's required to sit out for one play. And that's what I'm talking about right there, the left tackle. Zierden has to come out of the game, and now we're on to our third left tackle. Malik McGee is going to have to play this play, uh, number 65. And I don't know about this team, but I never had three good left tackles. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're hard to find. They're very hard to find. <laughs> There's not a lot of Jonathan Ogden's run, growing on trees out there. All right, first down and 10, and here's Jam over the right side, and Jam is down close to the six-yard line, and that was Nogamo again on the tackle for Scottsdale. And I watched the left tackle on that play, Malik McGee, and McGee did Number a decent job. Helmet came off. I had to leave the play. Or the but they didn't the ask game. him to do too much on that play. He just had a little base block, turnout block, and uh, was able to Executed okay, and he's got the starter back in there, Zierden. And Angel Silva is coming out because he lost his helmet, the linebacker for Scottsdale. You know, I have not seen, I, I think this is the most helmets that have come off in a game that I've ever seen. I mean, this has happened a good seven or eight times. Well, after this play, I'll tell you what I was told by uh, a coach, a recruiter that was on the sideline. Second down and six. They go back to Jam, and Jam still churning those legs as he gets it down inside the five-yard line. Brought down defensively by Maurice Burton, one of their top tacklers. And 51 was in there, Londell Sanders, who actually went in for Angel Silver. Number 94 must leave the game for one play. And we got another player who lost the helmet. And the information that I got at halftime was that there was a lot of action around the face mask and the helmets with the hands mm -hmm. from both teams. And uh, I, that, that stuff needs to be called. They should not be putting hands to the face mask or helmet, ripping those off. Third down and three for Central Lakes. They go back to Jam and he's running it over center. And a nice job by that Scottsdale defense, and they really plugged up the holes up the middle. Well, Jeff, that's the best job Scottsdale's done against that down blocking scheme I talked about at the very start of the game. They really squeezed the play off that time. The defensive tackles fought the pressure of the down block, and there was no place for Jam to run. And that's going to bring up a fourth and a looks like a short three and they've keeping their offense on the field despite being down by one point they don't trust their kicking game 10th play of the drive that started all the way back at the 49 yard line it's fourth down and two and a half here's the quarterback favor rolling out he has a wide open receiver the running back carlton d jam and he is into the end zone and they have regained the lead with the sixth lead change of the day well, Scottsdale was aligned in man-to-man -man coverage. They faked the ball to the tailback, and whoever had man coverage on the tailback didn't stay with his man. And Carlton Jam was just standing wide open. I think I could have completed that pass even with my tennis elbow right now. Yeah, Jeff. I think you could have. That, he that was receiver, wide open. There was not a man within 10 yards of him. And that puts 
Central Lakes back in the lead, and they're going to go ahead and keep kicking the extra point, it looks like. Which is a little surprising at this point, and that one was nearly blocked, but Zen's kick is good, and it's 34 to 28 with 39 seconds left to go here in quarter number three. You're watching the 35th Annual Valley of the Sun Bowl on MCTV. We'll be back in just a moment. Enfoque en tu futuro connects you with the diverse people and events that make up the Maricopa Community Colleges. Share in the success of our students. Celebrate the people who make a difference. Enfoque en tu futuro is about the people, places, and events that have an impact on the Maricopa Colleges. Tune into Enfoque en tu futuro only on MCTV Cox Cable 115. For times, visit our website at maricopa.edu slash mctv. Monaghan is up to the 33-yard line, and Scottsdale will take over after relinquishing yet another lead. We've had six lead changes in this Valley of the Sun Bowl, but it has been a, an epic game so far as we send it down. So we send it downstairs. Guys, so we've been seeing a lot of helmets come off during this game. I spoke with Scottsdale Community College equipment manager and he basically just said that they have to put some more air in the helmets and it all kind of depends on the physicality of the game it's something that we're not often seeing in these games but today obviously it's very physical out there they got to fix the strap put some more air in the helmets and they should be good to go all right Ashley thank you very much only 31 seconds left to go here in the third and this is way way with his 15th carry of the day and that's going to be good for about three yards as the tensions continue to mount Sean Walker Number 12, and that should take us to quarter number four, unless Brugman wants to snap off one more. Ten seconds on the clock. And a second down and a long seven. Scottsdale trailing 34-28, two, one, that's it. Quarter is in the books. Quarter number three from the 35th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl with the host team, the Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes, trailing. 34-28. Maricopa Now takes you inside the classrooms where students put their passion into practice and gives you a front row seat to the talent taking center stage. Maricopa Now introduces you to the programs and people that make a difference in your community. Get up close and personal with the desert dwellers who support student research. Tune in and learn how to make a new favorite dish. Maricopa Now, every day on Cox Cable Channel 115. Check out our website for times. Welcome back to the 35th Annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. Scottsdale in possession and trailing by six as we start quarter number four of the, the big bowl event here in Phoenix. Well, Jeff, that third quarter only amassed two scores. I don't think we're going to get to the 100 mark I was hoping for here tonight. Way, way on the carry as he's closing in on 200 yards. He had an 86-yard run from scrimmage. He went absolutely nowhere on that play. What a job on the outside. Those linebackers getting up there, making the stop. No gain, fourth and five, Scottsdale forced to punt. That's an unusual call there by Coach Ziegler. He's four, third and five. He's usually got something up his sleeve to pick up first downs, and Central Lakes was all over that zone replay to the outside. Just under the 14-minute mark here in quarter number four. Hiram Velez. And this one will be fair caught at the 27 yard line. So that'll be a 39 yard punt right around his average with 1340 on the clock here. And well, the key now is you, if you're Scottsdale making the stop because uh, Central Lakes has looked good that last time out on offense. Well, Central Lakes is so explosive. We've seen that already today. They can grind it out with the run game or they can go big down the field. They haven't gone deep down the field in a while, so I wouldn't be surprised if on this series we might see a shot to number six or number eight deep down the sideline. 
So they brought the ball, they marked the ball at the 27 yard line. That punt was actually 35 yards. And here's the handoff right up the gut and tripping. If he tripped over one of his own guys, but that was Blanchard. Nonetheless, tackled by Craig Kanyan Guerrara, the uh, second year player out of Lynn, Massachusetts. 6'1, 228 pounds. And no gain. Well, Central Lakes is staying in the same package. They've got the three wide receivers, in this case, with two running backs. We call that 20 personnel, no tight end in the game, and they like to run play action off of this as well as run the ball. Let's see if they look for Johnson on this play. Nope, they're going to find Winter for the first time in this game. And he's got the first down, it looks like, or very close to it. Nope, he's going to uh, be a little him shot. short. He, he went out of bounds at, right at the 35-yard line, and the defender hit him a little late over in that sideline. I thought we might get a flag for a late hit, but uh, uh, he pulled off at the last second there, and no flag, and key third and two for the Raiders. How huge would it be for Scottsdale to make a stop here? 12.38 on the clock. Third down and two, Central Lakes leading it by six here in quarter number four. Faber to hand off, running left, and I don't think he made it. Well, it was great second effort in there by uh, Blanchard at the tailback position, but I think you're right. I think they're going to mark it about a yard short and a big decision here for Coach Medic. Boy, this is his own 36-yard line. I think you've got to punt the ball here, but... Uh, He's not putting his punt team out there. He said he came to Scottsdale, Arizona to win a Valley of the Sun Bowl. That was a tremendous play by Brian Keyes on the previous play. So now fourth and one, and this could be a pivotal game, uh, pivotal play in this game. And there was some confusion as the quarterback had to go up there and take the snap. He had to go under center to get the snap and he dives ahead behind his center and he's got the first down. I'll tell you what, Coach Medic, <laughs> you got more nerve than I do. <laughs> I'm telling you what, that's a heck of a job by the quarterback to push forward and his offensive line to wedge that out to push to get the first down. Huge conversion for the Raiders. So they move the ball up to the 38 yard line, a gain of two, first down and 10 for Central Lakes. Greg Maddock coming in here with a record, career record with his team, 78 wins, 21 losses. And there's that Nawamo again, striking big number 90 on that front wall for Scottsdale. Well, Jeff, Scottsdale right now is going all out to stop the run. They're playing with no deep safeties down the field. This is exactly when you would expect the Raiders to look to number six, Kyron Johnson, on a post route, maybe off a of play action. And he's at the top of your screen, standing next to that second down marker near the 37-yard line. And Faber flushed out of the pocket, tracked down from behind, and... Craig Kanyan Guerrero with the quarterback sack, and that was a monster play. And that was a great job that time by the Scottsdale secondary. There was excellent coverage down the field. They backed off a little more because of the second and 10 situation. Uh, on first down, they were really tight with their safeties, but that time they backed off. They were in great coverage position on the receivers, and now that brings up a, a very, very important third and 12 for Central Lakes. Scottsdale lost this Valley of the Sun Bowl game a year ago to Nassau, New York, 34-27, won it the year before, 50-42. Here's a pass over the middle, and it's going to be caught. And that's Arlington, and he's going to have enough for the first down, a pickup of 14 yards on a great pass by Jake Faber. Well, and Arlington knew he was going to get tattooed as he caught that ball, but with great concentration, the 5'9", 174-pound receiver tucked it away, secured that ball, and get, picks up the first down. So look at that hit there by the safety. I believe that was uh, D.J. Olagi. Excuse me. No, D.J. Olmstead. I'm sorry. Coming out of the free safety position. So it's first down and 10. 9.19 on the clock, fourth quarter action. 
And they go to Jam, and Jam is stopped in the backfield and great penetration on the defense. That's Telvin's way, the corner, six foot, only 180 pounds out of West Palm Beach, Florida, who got into the backfield, disrupted it, and a tackle for loss. Well, that's the second time in this series that they brought the corner blitz. They've been trying to show double coverage on Johnson over there to the, to the uh, uh, Raiders sideline over there and then bringing the corner off the double coverage and blitzing him. And that time Way was able to hit the running back deep in the backfield for a big loss. This was the 11th play of the drive and this drive's eaten up five minutes plus of clock. And this pass is complete to the near side. Cody Rowell is inside the Fighting Artichokes 40 and will be wrapped up near the 37 yard line. A big, big play. I thought Faber was actually throwing the ball away, but instead he found Cody Rowell, who had 25 catches coming in, and that is a monster play here for this Central Lakes Raiders team as that play goes 16 yards for a first. Well, Jake Faber's awareness when he's on the move is just amazing. It's something that very few quarterbacks can do at the level he does. And I'm telling you what, he's a special, special player at quarterback. He stays in the pocket well, had some pressure, he throws and it's broken up incomplete. Good job on the near side. Young man who had a big first half in Kalen Cotton. Yeah, really nice coverage there by Scottsdale, but he, he still almost put that in there. Yeah. It's amazing. He has that, that can, can, uncanny ability to put it where his players can make a play on the ball, and it's very difficult for the defense. He's made one poor decision in this game. Other than that, he's been very impressive. That was the interception that was picked off by Telvin's way in the corner of the end yeah, zone. On the double coverage in the end zone. Left side, man, what a job by Londell Sanders getting in there on the carry by Trey Blanchard. Well, Scott still changed their defense that time. They've been playing mainly zone coverage against this four wide receiver set. That time they went to a man free concept, which meant they, they could keep both linebackers in the box. And uh, that time 51, Sanders was unable, they were unable to block him and get a pad on him because he was the extra man. And he made a great hit on that tackle to bring up a third and 10. No gain on the last play, 14th play of the drive coming up here for the Raiders. Faber with time, no time, and down he goes, quarterback sack for the Fighting Artichokes, and Joel Rufino, 6'3", 231 pounds out of Silver Springs, Maryland. Well, earlier in the game, I was critical of the three-man rush by Scottsdale, but later in the game, which is unusual, the second half here, the three-man rush is really keeping Scottsdale in the game. Now, the coverage was excellent as well, but those guys are fighting and working hard to put pressure, and three guys putting pressure is very, very difficult. Monahan standing back at his own 10-yard line. Mapes, who shanked his last punt, that went about 13 yards. Pressured, gets off a wobbly kick with a little height, and it's going to take a Scottsdale bounce and will be down near the 21-yard line, so about a 23-yard punt. Not a very good punt by Mapes who averages only 33 yards a kick this year. So 6.13 left to go, 34-28, Valley of the Sun Bowl 2015. And let's uh, send it down to the third member of our crew, Ashley Nell. So I know you guys mentioned Faber and his, um, you know, his offense so far this game, been very impressive. Greg Medic spoke with me about, you know, knowing that going into this game, this is going to be the toughest team that they played against all year with the most talent, and it's really showing. But the fact is, is that their quarterback is really keeping his composure out there. So it'll be interesting to see what he does for the rest of the game. So first down and 10. Thank you, Ashley. First down and 10. And we're going to get a stop here and play. It's going to be a delay. Came out delay of the game. Offense, number 10, five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Well, that's not how you want to start 
your game winning drive with six minutes to go on the clock. This is a key, key possession for the artichokes. 34-28, they're down six. They need to put a drive together and try to take that lead back. Yeah, both teams have turned the ball over quite a bit here today. We have six combined turnovers, three by each team, but nothing turned over here as Velez makes the catch. A little out route to the far side and picks up uh, about seven on the play up to the 25. That's one of my favorite pass routes, just a drag route from that slot receiver. He's hard to find, and Velez is a smaller man, and when he drags across the formation, it's tough to see number seven as he drops the screen pass. Whether he dropped it or Maurice Willis came in there and almost had a pick six, and that would have all probably put this game in the in the deep freeze. That's why I get scared about throwing that pass. Yeah. I have not, I'm not a big proponent of throwing that hot screen when you've got a walked off linebacker. So Scottsdale needing to convert on third down here. We're just under the six minute mark here in quarter number four of this 2015 Valley of the Sun Bowl. Scottsdale trailing 34-28. Brugman. And in trouble, changing his field, throws it down into double team coverage, and the ball's caught by Curitan. And that's a first down at the Central Lakes 45 yard line. That is a 30 yard pass. Uh, amazing composure that time by Tyler Brugman to keep on the move, keep his eyes down the field. And that ball looked like it might be picked off by Glennon, and Glennon was unable to make the play on the ball. And the man, Curitan, comes up with a great reception. And now he picks up five yards on that quick screen to the far side. They're going to mark the ball at the 40. It's a pickup of five, second down and five. I'll tell you what, uh, Brugman took uh, that. That was out of a page of uh, Jake Faber. <laughs> exactly right. Keeping on the move and his eyes focused down the field. We're down to 5-13. Now that missed extra point all the way back at the beginning of the first quarter. If Scottsdale can march down the field and score and get their extra points, the flag is down. Most likely a false start here. It is. It's a false start. Oh, that drives you false crazy start. when they do Offense, that. Offense, number 57, five-yard penalty. Remain second down. You got everything in the playbook, Jeff. It's second and five. Yeah. And then you go false start, now you're second and 10, and now the playbook just shrunk. I mean, it's, yeah. And they, they can get it, obviously, but that, that was a difficult, difficult. It's amazing what those five yards can do to the psyche. Well, let's see what Brugman can do here on second and 10. And he throws complete to the far side. Out of bounds, that was just Nawabi. past the line to gain, and that's New Wabi again. We had a touchdown you, earlier. He's come up with a couple really big plays in this game, and he got up a little hobbled on that play. Looks like he's going to be okay and stay in the game. And again, another great job by the quarterback, Brugman, keeping his composure and moving to his right, completing that pass. Now there's a player on the sideline of Central Lakes down on the field, and they're gonna stop play for, for right now. Even though he's off the field, he's right just off the sideline by the down marker over there. So four minutes and 38 seconds, we'll have, take a time out here. It's the Valley of the Sun Bowl on MCTV Sports. Get into the game with Inside Maricopa Sports. From the gridiron to track and field, the ninth inning to the winning goal. Inside Maricopa Sports brings you the excitement of Maricopa College's sports. Get up close and personal with athletes and coaches. Plus, meet the unsung heroes of the game. Join us on the field and behind the scenes on Inside Maricopa Sports. Only on MCTV, Cox Cable, Channel 115. Welcome back to Scottsdale Community College and the 2015 Valley of the Sun Bowl. A fresh set of downs for the Fighting Artichokes as they are marching inside Central Lake Territory. And here's Weiwei going to work, Armand Weiwei, who rushed for nearly 1,100 yards coming into this game. And he picks up about five on first down to the 29. Well, if Scottsdale could get five yards per carry, 
down into that end zone. That's exactly what the doctor would order. They could run that clock down and leave Central Lakes little time left to come back. And Weiwei averages 7.8 yards a carry. Now Brugman. He's got plenty of time on the playcock. That's 15. And he's throwing and incomplete. What That's a, a defensive play by the corner there. Right at the last second, I believe McLean. that was McLean, number 23. Flag. Just perfect timing to go up and knock that ball away. And that ball was coming out of the sun, too. Yes, it was. This is, you know, you, you, you can't ask for a bigger play in a football game than, than this one right now. We got a third down, five yards to go. Well, we'll see what the flag's all about. Head out to a man downfield. Mm -hmm. Offense, number 77. Five-yard penalty, replay second. So a couple of penalties on this drive. Just, you know, they just keep, yeah, there's been a lot of penalties really on both sides. Yeah, and this, you know, it just makes it more and more difficult for your offense to stay consistent with those penalties. But Brugman has been able to pull him out. He's had a heck of a game today. I'll tell you what, I, he's, this is his best performance probably of the season. At least they did it on second down. Way, way, stutter steps in the backfield, takes off down the field, and he's into the end zone. A 34-yard touchdown run by Armand Way, Way. And boy, did that offensive line open up some kind of hole on the right side. Well, they brought the blitz off the near side here, and both the defensive end and outside linebacker rushed up the field, did not squeeze the gap to the inside. The rest of the, watch it right here, Number 12 runs right past it. The outside linebacker runs up the field, and Weiwei makes a great move on Sean Walker, number 12, the defensive end, and the rest was done by the O-line, and Weiwei's in the end zone. Now the extra point, and the kick is good. That will break the 34-all tie, giving Scottsdale another lead. With 3.41 left to play in this 2015 Valley of the Sun Bowl, the Artichokes lead Central Lakes by one. In the district, keeping you connected to the Maricopa Community Colleges. From game time to curtain call, In the District brings you information on the events and activities that matter most. Find out about notable guest speaker appearances. Make time for an activity that could affect your life. Enjoy all that the Maricopa Colleges District has to offer. Tune into In the District daily on MCTV Cox Cable Channel 115. Check out our website for times. Welcome back to DACA Buter Sports Complex. We're on the campus of Scottsdale Community College for the 35th Annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. As the Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes got their second rushing touchdown from their premier back, Armand Weiwei, who has rushed for over 220 yards here today. And if they can hold on, I would imagine he will be granted the game most valuable player. Team. Five yard penalty, replay the kick. Interesting, you don't see that very often. The receiving team offsides, but that was the case there. You know, Scottsdale showed tremendous resolve on that last drive, Coach. And, uh, you know, they started from their own 16-yard line. They, 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 they overcame, a, two pen, overcame two penalties on that drive, too. I mean, it's, this, this, is, this team from Central Lakes averages 17 points a game scoring on, defense. Yeah. And Scottsdale now is at 35 points, double. All right, this is Arlington. And Arlington looking for a seam, but he'll race out of bounds at the 30. That was a great job that time by number seven, Curtis Taylor, the defensive back who was the contain man. And he was about the only artichoke in position to slow that play down. And he slow played it literally and forced Arlington to stutter step a little bit so his Scottsdale pursuit could come and force him out of bounds. Okay, so now you've got Central Lakes with three minutes and 34 seconds left to go. Plenty of time. Plenty, Jake. Of, 
Plenty Jake. of time, but there's a few key factors. Number mm -hmm. one, they get a lousy kicker. So most likely they're going to look to score a touchdown, and that's obviously much more difficult than putting yourself in position to kick field goals. And Faber finds Rowell to the near side. He's pushed out of bounds. The other factors are down to two timeouts. Now three minutes and 30 seconds and two timeouts, that's a lifetime in college football because you get out of bounds and stop the clock, you get first downs and stop the clock, so that's not a big issue right now. Jam in the backfield, but they're going to the air and an off balance throw and it's picked off. Are they gonna give it to him? That's the only question. And what a spectacular play by Kylan Cotton. And that's his second turn takeaway of the game, Jeff. He made the great fumble recovery scoop earlier in the game. And that was an incredible diving interception off the deflection by Mr. Cotton. And you'll see it right here. It hits the receiver's hands, Ooh. and he definitely got his hands underneath the ball right, right there. And I, I, good thing they don't have replay because maybe some replay booth guy would have said no, no, no. But uh, I thought, sure, he got both hands underneath it. Do you agree, Jeff Flowery? Jeff Flowery, what did you see? Uh, it was too fast. <laughs> I need another couple looks at it. So 317 left to go, and here is Weiwei. Now this is this is the situation now. You got Scottsdale up by one, but there's a lot of time left. Two timeouts remaining for Central Lakes, who trail by only one. And not to tell Doug Madosky and Coach Ziegler how to run their offense, but if you got a guy that's averaging nearly eight yards a carry, you you gotta ride him. To a, a, you need a first. You need at least one first down here. Well, Central Lakes has come up into an eight-man front now, which they haven't been playing the whole game to try to stop the run from the Artichokes. You might see a pass on this play. Instead, Weiwei gets the carry. He found a, he found a good opening over there, as he is going to be wrapped up there by Pollock. Good job by that right side of the Scottsdale line. Central Lakes is using their second timeout right there. Central Lakes, the their second timeout. So we're down to two minutes and 26 seconds, Jeff Lowry. And what are you going to do on third and four? You got the great running back. He's had a tremendous game all night or all afternoon. And, you know, I would be tempted to obviously give him the ball. Oh, there's a replay here of the interception. And, yeah, it looks like a good play all the way there. Look at him get his hands underneath the ball right there. And he does a great job turning oh. his body. Oh, excellent, excellent job by Cotton. And that was one heck of a, a big play in this game. He, he might, if we, I don't know how many MVPs we have in this game, whether we have an offensive and a defensive or just one MVP, but he has a case, you know, two big turnovers, but most people lean towards those offensive guys and they get well over 200 yards rushing. And there's Mr. Cotton on the sideline getting congratulations from one of his teammates. So third and four. Well, two big interceptions of this great quarterback, Jake Faber. One in the end zone, Talvin's way back in the uh, third quarter. And Mr. Cotton coming up large here late in the fourth. And there's the pass. And that's Ty Ear Blakes on the far side, still on his feet, and he's inside the red zone. Actually, they're going to mark him out of bounds near the 20. And what a great call there by Coach Ziegler, the offensive coordinator. Just a simple, what we call arrow route with the tight end going directly to the flat. Nobody in position to cover him. We, we just had said they'd move to an eight-man front, and they're jamming the box with the safety, so there was no outside linebacker or safety in position. You can see him right there, wide open. And 59 was the closest defender, and he's an inside linebacker. Time That's out. Maurice. Central Lakes, the final time out of the half. You know, talking about Tyre Blakes, and, and I was starting to say something about this earlier. You know, this is a young man, big 6'5". He looks like a tight end. Um, wasn't a big receiving tight end in high school when he played over at Mountain Point. They won a state title a couple of years ago over Hamilton. Uh, he was kind of the guy I thought was going to take the place of some of these other great tight ends they've had here. It didn't quite work out. He hasn't been a go-to guy. 
virtually all season long, but here today, they've been they, looking at they him. They have, and that was a huge play, and, and he was the guy that they designed the entire play for. And, you know, a lot of it, Jeff, has to do with injuries to the quarterback, Brugman, early in the season. Brugman's a new quarterback. He wasn't in the system last year, so it takes a little bit longer. You, you put the combination of an injury and a new system together, and it's going to stunt the performance of your passing game. And, so, and, and at that point, you know, they were to the point where they had to count on the run game, and Weiwei's been the guy that been carrying the mail for him. So 218 on the clock, double tight end formation, one-on-one -on -one coverage, and Curriton is in the back of the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Fighting Artichokes. A 20-yard pass play to Curriton, their top receiver this year, and things are looking good for the Fighting Artichokes. Well, and Coach Tommy Ziegler said the Artichokes came to the Valley of the Sun Bowl to win as well. Yes. And that was going after it. Now, incredible call, great catch and throw, but still when they make this extra point, Central Lakes is still only down one score. Yes. They'd still like to have that one extra point back that they missed on the very first touchdown of the game as Eric Lopez extends the lead to 42-34. So the worst scenario is that Central Lakes can tie it if they march downfield. And you're watching the 35th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl brought to you by MCTV. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. If you store your guns properly, I'll feel safer when I'm playing outside. Safer when walking home. And I won't have to tell my kids, this isn't a drill. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Always. Lock it up. Scottsdale with a very impressive drive that started all the way back at their own 16-yard line. Ending up with a 20-yard touchdown pass, the fourth of the day by Tyler Brugman and the 19th of the season to his top receiver, Shaq Curitan, his second receiving touchdown as Arlington returns it and Central Lakes needing a big play here on special teams. He brings it up to the 35 and another big play by Kylan Cotton over there. He didn't make the tackle, but he cut off that far side and kept Arlington at bay. Well, Jeff, let me play devil's advocate for a moment. There's a minute 59 to go in the game. Central Lakes has no timeouts left. If Scottsdale would have kept the ball on the ground, punched out a first down, mm -hmm. and then scored, there might not be any time left on the clock. And they may not even have to score. But now Central Lake gets the ball back, and they still have a chance because they're only down one score with the two-point conversion. Did you want me to ask Doug Madoski if he'd like to take that touchdown back as this pass is to the far side incomplete? Well, I'm not going to say anything at this point. You know, it depends upon how the game ends up. But, you know, there's two ways to approach these things. You know, yeah. you, can, you, you think you're, you score a touchdown, that's what you want to do there. Well, yeah, but what if you could run out the clock instead? Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and they're... They, without any timeouts left, they could have run out the clock, conceivably. Wouldn't oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Second down and 10. Intercepted, and it's a moot point, Coach. And the young man who made the play is Brian Keyes. That will seal the deal here in 2015. Well, Keyes just made an incredible drop. They're playing zone coverage. Yep. He makes an incredible drop to the curl zone. He's playing inside linebacker, and he's out here outside the hash mark. Watch him right here. Boom. He's outside the hash mark when he catches that ball. How many linebackers can do that? Not very many from an inside linebacker position. As we pointed him out early, before the game, in our pregame setup, Great player against both the run and the pass. I'm not sure where he's being recruited to, but if I had any influence on anybody, 
he's a guy I'd want on my team next year. 6'2", 247 pounds out of Shadow Ridge High School in Surprise, Arizona. He's had a tremendous two years here for the Fighting Artichokes. Now there's one minute and 35 seconds. Clock continues to wind down here, quarter number four. And some of the artichokes are already dancing on the field, which you can't blame them, Jeff. But well, Mr. This has been a heck of a game. Yeah. You know, the, 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 Coach Madoski was not happy with the emotion intent, and intensity of his football team at halftime. And they definitely turned the switch for this second half and played a much cleaner game and much more intense second half. And that's the reason why they won this football game. And they limited this team to one touchdown here in the second half. It was 27-21 at the half. Well, Doug Madoski is a great defensive coach. He's a great head coach and he's a great defensive coach. And you could see by his interview with Ashley at halftime that he was pretty disgusted with the play of his defense. He takes a lot of pride in, in his whole team, but especially in how physical and intense his defenders play, and he wasn't seeing what he's used to in that first half. Well, he got it from him the second half. So there's still 28 seconds on the clock, but the crowd responding, the hugs. Doug Madoski. He got the Gatorade bath already. They got him early. He wasn't ready for it. <laughs> they never are. Oh, no, I used to get ready for it. <laughs> I, learned, I learned the hard way on those. Gatorade bass. Well, the zeros are up on the board, and here in 2015, the Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes win it over Central Lakes. They are Valley of the Sun Bowl champions. Final score 42 to 34, and truly an instant classic here on MCTV Sports. MCTV Sports continues with post-game coverage of the 2015 Valley of the Sun Bowl. The final score here today from Scottsdale, the Fighting Artichokes 42, Central Lakes Raiders 34. And that's sent it down to Ashley Neville. Congratulations, Coach. What does this win mean for you? I think it's all just big for our program. Obviously, for Scottsdale Community College and our football team, these guys have worked their tails off all year long, facing adversity, coming back from it, starting off 2-0, and then losing four in a row, and then finding a way to win five in a row. It's obviously tough, a month layoff. We're down a lot of guys. Guys have been beat up and hurt. But, you know, I mean, certainly it's a great win for our program. I talked to you before going into halftime. What did you tell your players at the half, and how did you guys come out here and take the momentum away? Well, I think for us it was just like we said before halftime. It was about you know not going out and, and doing the same things over and over again, stop getting so many of these ridiculous penalties and, and extending drives. We did a better job with that in the second half. I think we just we, you know, we just capitalized a little bit more in the second half, and it gave us an opportunity to win. How does this win compare to other ones that you've had in the past? You know, they're all big. You know, I, I don't think any any win is, you know, is small. And certainly, obviously, winning the Valley of the Sun Bowl for the second time in three years and being here three years in a row is, is a great achievement for our program. And, you know, now we've got to try to figure out a way to get back next year and do it again. All right. Thanks, Coach, and congratulations to you. Thank you very much. First, we would like to congratulate both Scottsdale Community College and Central Lakes College on their terrific 2015 season. And now let's move on to our individual awards. I'm joined by Valley of the Sun Bowl President, Mr. Art Becker. Our offensive and defensive awards are named after the late Pete Pesciotta. Pete was a long-time director of athletics at Glendale Community College and he was one of the founders of the Valley of the Sun Bowl game in 1981. Today's game was the 35th edition of the Valley of the Sun Bowl. 
receiving the Pete Fizio Most Valuable Player Awards for Offense. We have co-MVPs Shaq Carrington with a guy of receptions of 147 yards and two touchdowns. And Armand Wayway with a 17 points of 175 yards and two touchdowns. Congratulations again to Shaq Carrington and Armand Wayway. And now receiving the Pete Fiziano Most Valuable Player Award for defense is number five, Brian Keyes. Yeah. Brian finished the game with 12 tackles, one pass deflection, and one interception. Yeah. Once again, congratulations to Brian Keyes. And at this time, we would like to bring head coach Doug Majowski up to receive the championship trophy. The coach, on behalf of Maricopa County Community Colleges and the Valley of the Sun Bowl, we would like to present you with the Valley of the Sun Bowl championship trophy. Once again, our final score here in the 2015 Valley of the Sun Bowl, Scottsdale victorious as they go to seven and four by way of record with a 42-34 win over Central Lakes. They drop to eight and three, and uh, one of the most enjoyable games that uh, you and I have called here in the last couple of years. Hey, let's send it back down to Ashley Neville. She's got two very special people with her. Hey guys, yeah, I'm standing next to the co-MVPs on offense, Armin Weiwei and Shaquille Currenton. What does this win mean for you? Uh, it means a lot. I mean, it's a great way to end the season, a uh, good way to, you know, just show that we weren't, we weren't just an average team and we stepped up and we fought through adversity. And how does it feel to be a co-MVP of this game? Uh, it feels real good, uh, especially after all the hard work that we've been putting in all during the season. It's finally paid off. We done came out and clicked together, so it just feels good. And you had over 240 yards in this game. You've been a force on offense all season. How do you do it? Uh, just listening to coaching, man, and working hard week in and week out and just grinding, really. You know, that's the biggest thing every week. You know, not missing any meetings, not missing any uh, time in the weight room, and just making sure that I'm uh, ready for every Saturday. And what was it about the offensive line that really helped your offense, you know, attack there in the second half? Uh, coach wanted us to come out and establish the line. So we had three plays where we wanted to take shots, but in the se second series, we wanted to come out and establish the line for the run. So when we came out and we did that, we see we could run the ball. It's just like, go get it. How are you both going to celebrate tonight after this win? Uh, you know, just go home and read a book. Uh, <laughs> chill, get ready for uh, next semester of school. Okay, what about you? You do the same thing? <laughs> nah, I'm about to go make some more highlights, <laughs> send them out to coaches and try to go on to my next journey. <laughs> Well, congratulations to you both. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Ashley, and thanks, gentlemen, on a great second half and a great Valley of the Sun Bowl victory for Scottsdale. They win it by a final score of 42 to 34. Stay with us. We have more from MCTV Sports following this game's coverage. We will have a special Valley of the Sun Bowl edition of Maricopa Gridiron. So for Ashley Neville, Joe Kirsting, our Hall of Fame coach. I'm Jeff Lowry saying so long from Scottsdale and our entire MCTV crew. Get into the game with Inside Maricopa Sports. From the gridiron to track and field, the ninth inning to the winning goal, Inside Maricopa Sports brings you the excitement of Maricopa College's sports. Get up close and personal with athletes and coaches. Plus, meet the unsung heroes of the game. Join us on the field and behind the scenes on Inside Maricopa Sports, only on MCTV, Cox Cable, Channel 115. Community College Artichokes go into their third consecutive Valley of the Sun Bowl, hosting the Central Lakes College Raiders. 
Things don't start out so hot for Central Lakes. A high snap leads to a fumble, and Scottsdale recovers the football. It's fourth and goal. The artichokes go for it. A little mishandle of the ball for Tyler Brugman, but he finds Tyre Blake in the end zone. SEC up 7 to nothing. Raiders quarterback Jake Faber responds, launching this rocket 43 yards into the hands of his receiver, Kieran Johnson. SEC still leads 7-6 after a missed extra point attempt from Central Lakes. But they make up for it right here as Faber throws another beauty 52 yards to Bo Wilhelm. CLC takes the lead 13-7. Rugman responds with a pass over the middle to Doobie Nuwabi. SEC leads 21-13. Later in the half, Central Lakes was not going away, taking the lead 27 to 21 with a touchdown run from Carlton Jam. The Artichokes try to take the lead, but Brugman throws an interception. CLC leads 27 to 21 at the half. Coming out of halftime, the Artichokes give the Raiders a taste of their own medicine with the interception. Later, Brugman hands it off to Armin Weiwei. He's going and going, and he's gone. 86 yards, he can't be stopped, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. SEC takes the lead 28-27, but CLC is back in business. Faber scrambling, finds Carlton for the 34-28 lead. Fourth quarter action, Weiwei takes off again and goes all the way untouched 34 yards for the touchdown. The Artichokes hang on to the momentum with this big time diving interception. Brugman to the back of the end zone, finds Shaq Currington and it's a touchdown for the Artichokes. Scottsdale goes on to win the 2015 Valley of the Sun Bowl with a score of 42 to 34. I'm Ashley Neville for Maricopa Gridiron. The fans are pumped up and ready to spin through our Maricopa Gridiron Top 10 Plays of 2015. The Eastern Arizona Gila Monsters provide number 10 as quarterback Dietrich Clark sparkles with his 91-yard touchdown run against Mesa. Clark rushed for an astonishing 276 yards in that game. The Mesa Thunderbirds with our number nine play. Cayman Clayton jumps the route and takes the interception back 80 yards for the touchdown against Pima. If you like defensive scores, Glendale delivers at number eight. Three first half defensive touchdowns topped by the Gauchos Jordan Willis 95 yard interception return against Mesa. Scottsdale's Chavosky Collins comes in at number seven. Collins with six interceptions this season here with a 58 yard touchdown return against Glendale in their win over the Gauchos. Glendale Special Teams comes in with our number six play of the year. Facing Arizona Western, Nate McLaurin blocks the extra point attempt and teammate Byron Evans II takes it back 86 yards for the two point play. The Phoenix College Bears provide our number five highlight, showing us even when things go wrong, they can be right. The bad snap didn't keep Nick Duckworth from chasing it down and then throwing a touchdown strike to his favorite target, Londell Lee. The Snow College Badgers with our number four play as punt returner Parker Prater shows no fear going into traffic and snagging the punt on the bounce, weaving his way to a 67-yard touchdown return. Back to the fighting artichokes for our number three play. Quarterback Tyler Brugman with a beautiful pass to Shaq Curranton who catches it over two Glendale defensive backs for the touchdown. I'm a little biased, so trick plays take our top two spots at number two, Phoenix College runs the reverse to Billy Suing, who pulls up and throws a touchdown pass to Londell Lee against Mesa. At number one, Glendale turns to trickery as well, not once but twice against Scottsdale. Daniel Smith on the end around turns and fires a strike to Sean Poindexter, who slips right through two artichoke defenders on his way to a 77-yard touchdown. Masters of deception, Glendale would do it again in a playoff rematch with Scottsdale. This time it's Sean Poindexter on the reverse and he throws the touchdown pass to Jameer Washington who makes an incredible catch with a defender all over him. And Washington takes away our top honor. I'm Kevin Hunt for Maricopa Gridiron.